and welcome to my office. So, um, I just finished having class with my graduate students and realized that one of the sticking points was on residuals and on conditioning and what that means and that sort of thing. And so I explained it to them in a way that uh, helped it click for them and I wanted to share that same information with you. So with that, let's get into my iPad. And thank you for joining me. All right, so I'm going to start out with a fictitious data set. And let's say we have three variables. Say we've got stress and depression and mother's depression. So maybe we want to see the effect of stress on depression after controlling for mother's depression. And just for fun, we're gonna go ahead and put some fake scores in here. And to make it easier on ourselves, we'll say stress is one, two, and three. And depression, let's say it is one and three and two. And let's say that mother's depression is equal to, I don't know, um, 1.5 and then 2.7 and 2.5. And again, we want to know the effect of stress on depression after controlling for mother's depression. So one way we can conceptualize how to go about doing this is to think of a scatter plot. And so we are going to put mother's depression on the x-axis and then depression on the y-axis. And so let's say we got one, two, and three here. And so we can just plot this, and well, I guess we'll put one, and two, and three there. And so what we're going to do is we're gonna plot this. And to do that, we're just going to identify the coordinates of each of these. So we've got 1.5 on depression, or mother's depression, and then one on depression. So that's gonna give us a dot right there. And then we've got 2.7 on um, mother's depression, and then three. We'll put that about right there. And then 2.5 and two. And so if we looked at this and kind of viewed it as a scatter plot, we've got a strong positive relationship and we could even fit a regression line. So now this visual represents the model where depression is equal to B0 plus B1 times mother's depression. All good so far, right? That's all simple stuff. Now, when we start conceptualizing what a residual is, remember that a residual is just the difference between each individual data point and the line. So if you draw a line, just a vertical line, uh, all along the line, this right here is that person's residual, this is that person's, and then this is that person's. And so I'm just gonna make a guess because I don't actually know what that regression line is, but let's go ahead and add another column here called residual. And let's just make a guess based on those things. So I would say that that one right there, so if that's 0.5, so maybe that's about a 0.5 residual. And so the residual right here, oh, for that person, we have gotta figure out which person that is. So that's going to be the person who has a depression score of 3. So it's going to be for that row. So we said that was 0.5. So again, that right there corresponds to that person again because their score was 2.7 on mother's depression and 3 on depression, which we got 3 there, we got 2.7 there. So there we go. So that's that person's residual. Now let's go ahead and look at the next residual. And so maybe um, that was 0.5. Let's go ahead and call this 0.25. It might be closer to 0.5, but let's just say it's 0.25, just for fun. So we've got a 0.25 residual, and that is for the person who has a depression or mother's depression score of 2.5, which is right there, and the depression score of 2. So we're going to call their residual, except this person is minus 0.25. And then this one, let's say that one is positive 0.25. Why not? So we got 0.25. What we could actually do is we could take these data points right here 
and plot those in their own graphic. So to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and move that model over. Ah. There we go, just so we could remember what that model was. Okay, now we're going to put another histogram, but this time, instead of the x-axis being mother's depression, we're going to put stress. And on the y-axis, instead of putting depression, we're going to put residual. What this axis represents is it represents depression after subtracting out the effect of mother's depression. And now we can plot this xy graph just as we did before. And so as before, we're going to go 1, 2, and 3. And so we've got somebody who's got a score of 1, but they're residual. Let's see, it goes from negative uh, 0.25 to positive 5. And so let's put 0 right there. Let's say that right there is negative 0.25. That's positive 0.25. And that is positive 0.5. So now what we're doing is we're going to take this 0.25 and 1. So that's the data point for this person. And then we're going to look at positive 0.5 and 2, which is going to give us that uh, dot right there. And then we got negative 0.25 and 3. And then now let's imagine what the regression line looks like. And so let's just pretend that the regression line looks like that. Okay, so what does this regression line represent? This actually represents the relationship between stress and depression once we subtract out the effect of mother's depression. But the model that corresponds to this plot is actually going to be depression is equal to B0 plus B1 times mother's depression plus B2 times stress. And so the slope of this line right here is approximately, it's not equal to exactly, but conceptually it's identical. And the reason why they're not exactly the same is because regression doesn't actually estimate one model than another. It does this all simultaneously, but it's conceptually identical. And so let me just review what we have done here. First, we fit a model. Of course, we didn't actually fit the model. We just guessed at what the model was that looked at the relationship between mother's depression and, and your depression. And then we fit a model to that. And then we extracted the residuals and we created a new column in our data set called residual. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to take those residuals and put those on the Y axis. But on the x-axis, we're going to put our new variable. And so this plot right here is a visual representation of what we mean by controlling for or conditioning on. This right here is a visual representation of the effect of stress on depression after controlling for mother's depression. And by the way, another name for that is an added variable plot. And like I said, this line is um, our visual representation of that parameter. Now a question that you might be asking is what is the visual representation of that parameter? And actually it's not there. And it's not that one because remember that parameter right there is the visual or that parameter right there maps onto that uh, regression line. And this regression line is not controlling for anything. This B1 represents the effect of mother's depression after controlling or subtracting out the effect of stress. And we don't have a visual representation of that. Of course, we could do that. We would just kind of switch things up. And instead of putting mother's depression right here, we put stress first. And then instead of putting stress right here, we'd put mother's depression. But the process is going to be identical. So I'm hoping that, if nothing else, that this totally demystified the idea behind residuals and controlling and what is actually happening in the background. And in the background, it's actually really simple what these statistics are doing. And technically, the regression models actually do something slightly more complicated than that, but it's actually not that much more complicated. Like I said earlier, uh, regression models actually estimate these things simultaneously. They don't do it one at a time like I showed you, but conceptually, it's basically the same thing. So with that, peace out.